Let's say, for example, that we had two different numeric controls. We wanted to generate a string from them. Say, for example, they were called lower limit, upper limit, and these are floating point numbers. These are doubles. Say we also have, for example, a control called number of failures. And this one, instead of being a double, its representation was I32. So what we wish to do is we want to generate a string indicator, and we want to format all this information into one string. Let's access from the string subpalette the format into string function. The format into string function does is allow, allow us to combine one or more types of data and convert them into a string. Let's look at the context help for the format into string function. We see that it takes at the top here a format string, also an initial string in the top left, and then a series of input, which in this case are represented as floating point numerics, but in fact can be just about any data type. The format string can be created by right-clicking and choosing Create Constant. The way that we use the format into string function is to take the desired numerics or other data types and wire them into this bottom left input. The format into string function is expandable, so we can add as many inputs as we like. But for this example, let's start with just a single input. The format string is used to tell the function how to treat this data. There's a series of codes which are used to describe how to format the data. One example of this is the percent %f code, which uses the default formatting to display a fractional number. Remember that the point of this function is to take a numeric or other type of data and format it into a string. So of course the important output here is the resulting string. Let's connect that up to the string indicator we've created. Go back to the front panel and change our lower limit to be some number. Next, when we run the VI, we see that we do indeed have the number that we've connected up being displayed in the resulting string. What makes this particular function very powerful is the level of customization that you can achieve by using and modifying this format string. For example, Any string can be typed in here. If it does not contain a percent code, it's just treated as constant text. So the result of this particular setup will be to say, for example, the lower limit is colon, space, and then the number. So remember that this is all live. If we were to change the value of the lower limit, the number changes, but the rest of the text does not. We can be even more detailed and use a second string as well as a second format specifier. Now notice what happens now. As soon as I click outside of this format string specifier, I now have a broken VI. The reason is, you can probably see why already, but if we try and run it will tell us. The format into string has too many format specifiers. It goes on to say that there should be one format specifier for each argument. Naturally, because I have 2% Fs, I must have two inputs connected here. And of course, once I connect my upper limit and my lower limit, that requirement is satisfied and the VI is ready to run. It can occasionally be a challenge to remember all of the format codes necessary. And that's why the edit format string functionality is so nice. If we double click on the format into string function, the edit format string window appears. And we see if we look at what we have here, the edit format string, it's already showing us the format string which we specified. Further, it's broken down that input string into a sequence. For example, the first function here we see is called output exact string. As we click through these, we see it shows us each section of the format string. 
So the first part is outputting an exact string, which of course is our text. For example, the lower limit is colon space. The second is a format fractional number. This is our percent %f. Because we've just chosen the basic default settings percent %f, it's defaulted to write justify and pad using spaces. The minimum field width is not turned on and the specified precision is not turned on. This is where we can very easily modify this format specifier without having to memorize all the special codes. For example, if we want to force a minimum field width of say 8 characters, when we enter in a value here, notice how the percent %f code has automatically been updated to be percent %8f. Further, we can turn on all these other options such as specified precision of 5, we can change right justify to left justify, we can change the pad using spaces to pad using zeros, and now when we click OK, the modifications are automatically made to our format string and when we run it, of course, it's represented properly in the resulting string. So let's return to editing that string. Recall that we learned we can do that by double clicking on the format into string function. Alternately, we can do that by right clicking on the edge and choosing edit format string. We want to add a new operation now. Let's now deal with the number of failures input. So we'll add a new operation places it at, a, at the end. See how it defaults to be a percent %f? In this case, we do not have a fractional number. We have a decimal number. So let's choose the appropriate selection from here. We're going to choose Format Decimal Integer. And we can see that all of the different types of formatting is listed here, along with an example of each. Similarly to the fractional setup, we can now choose how the decimal integer is going to be displayed, or we can leave them as default and observe that it's been a percent %d function which is added to the format string. So now again when we click OK, we try and exit, we see that the VI is again broken. We know why. The reason is that this hasn't been hooked up. But what has been done automatically is that a third input has been added. So as soon as we connect up this input, to the input of our format into string, and we run it, we see that our decimal number is now being displayed. Next, we can right click to return to our edit format string, and we can manually enter in some information anywhere within our format string. For example, I want to modify this slightly. I want to add a period followed by and our number of failures was. And as soon as we make this modification, notice how the format sequence has again automatically been updated to represent it. Next we click OK and we run. We now have a very nicely formatted string based on three numeric inputs with a very minimal amount of programming required. A certain amount of care was necessary to properly set up the format string.